step right up. Why don't you come along and try out our latest science exhibition? Don't you want to come and try it out for yourself? You sure you don't want to try it out for yourself? You just have to hit it with a hat. You don't want to do that? You just want to watch other people do that? You want to be a spectator rather than someone who's active? All right, well, you, sir, you look like you're an active player. Why don't you come on through? We are talking about, of course, today, the whole problem of a spectator player versus an active player, and whether there's anything that you should do to mitigate, include, change, alter, or try and bring that spectator player into your game. And the bottom line is, don't. Spectator players are individuals who rock up for your game, they chat socially to everyone that's uh, in the uh, game itself, and they have a character and they participate in the game by basically not saying anything. And when you throw the initiative to the player and you say, what does your character do? No, yeah, I go along with the flow. Uh, you don't want to speak to any NPCs? No, I don't think so. Everyone else is doing a pretty good job of it. A spectator player is a passive player, and it's a player who is there to enjoy the story, to watch it unfold, and basically to not necessarily get too involved. An active player, on the other hand, is the one who's making the roles and speaking into all of your NPCs, making decisions, making choices, driving the party that way, driving the party in another direction, and they're the ones that are there to bring the whole thing to life. So how do you balance it out? Well, I have got five steps, five, not steps, five items that I think of when I identify a passive a spectator player versus an active player. And I try and keep this in the back of my mind because trying to force a spectator player, trying to force a spectator player to become an active player is a waste of your time and also will most likely chase them away from your game. They don't like it. So here we go. Step number one or item number one. Item number one. Spectators like to watch and assist in combat. They like to be there where they can make some rolls, they can do some damage. They're not there to do the most damage. They're not there to kill the most creatures. They're just there to participate in the battle and to basically just follow around in the background. They're not there to go reap any glory. They don't need to be the saviors. They're just there for fun. Active players like to be at the very center of combat, defeating those foes, speaking massive speeches about how they're going to valiantly triumph and that kind of thing. They like to be at the center of combat, they like to be involved in combat, and ultimately they like to win that combat. And they like to be the ones that help and make sure that it is a success. Number two. Spectators are happy to go with the flow. If there's a problem, they'll let the other players solve it. Or maybe they might venture an opinion, but they won't fight for that opinion. They won't stick by their guns most of the time, and I'm generalizing, of course, but in general, spectators like to see what others do and just go along for the ride. In all likelihood, some spectators, the extreme spectators, if you like, most likely don't even want to participate. They'd be happy just to sit and watch the game unfold. But because they are required to, they participate and they'll roll the dice and add their numbers and have a character, but they won't have a good backstory, they won't necessarily have developed anything that would remotely require them to be engaged in and with and by NPCs and the like. Active players are all about direction, they're all about making the decisions, and if they're not making the decisions, they will feel very, very unengaged. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, last week's video on engagement was all about focusing the story around the players. And in particular, focusing the story around your active players. Because they want the story to revolve around them. They want to be the ones making the decisions. They want to be the one driving everything forward. Number three. The spectators don't want undue attention or decision-making. Don't get a spectator to have to choose. 
Don't leave the spectator in a position where they're the only ones who can save the party and they have to decide between that party member and that party member or they have to have the diplomatic conversation. They feel uneasy. It's an awkward thing for them. They don't really like doing it. They don't know which decisions to make. And even if they do know which decisions to make, they're reluctant to make them because it will influence the active players, characters, and they don't like that, generally speaking. So don't give the spectator the trouble of decision making. Rather give it to the active players. The active players love it. Let them choose life or death. Does the village burn to the ground or do we save it? Cake or not cake? What do we decide? The active players are the ones who are there so that they can make decisions and see the consequences thereof. The spectator doesn't want to make decisions because they're terrified that the consequences will not be what everybody else wants them to be. And they don't like that kind of pressure. So don't give it to them. Unless you absolutely have to and you're a sadistic, maniacal bastard and you want to watch everything come crashing down as the spectator makes the most passive, the least problem-causing, the most inactive decision that they possibly can whilst they desperately wait for an active player to step in and make the stupid decision that the active players invariably are going to make. So don't do it. It's ill-advised. In all of my experience, you throw a bone towards the passive player and all that happens is it lands in the mud and they watch it slowly dissolve because they don't know what to do with it and they don't want to do anything with it. Number four, spectators in your game are supporters and sometimes guides. They will guide the active player in terms of having some kind of knowledge. They will have some skill somewhere which you as the GM can say, well, make a knowledge role, make a nature role, make a this role or a that. And then they get some information and they will pass that on, generally speaking, to the active players who will then act upon it. So they are supporters and they are guides. They are not our principal character. They're not our heroes. Those are our active characters. Our active characters are leaders and followers. The followers move with the leaders in the hopes of becoming the leader one day or in the hopes of being active and involved in the situation and not necessarily making the tough decisions. But they are still going to make decisions, they're still going to participate and they still want to move forward. They're not supports, they're not guides, they are there to participate and be supported by your spectator players and the like. Number five, spectators like rewards but don't crave them. A spectator character likes to receive gold at the end of the adventure, likes to receive a new gun that they can use because they're the sniper and they don't make decisions and things, they just move around in the background and occasionally take out an enemy here or there, but they follow orders and they just get along with it. Active players love rewards and they love rewards that help them to do more stuff. If they can get given rewards that allow them to be bigger, better, bolder, and to make more decisions, they are in their element. So the reward structure, although I'm not saying you prejudice against spectators, I'm just saying that when you give the spectator that amazing ring that gives them a whole bunch of charismatic power, don't be surprised if they give it away. Because a charismatic character generally is the one that's in the front, it's generally one that's making decisions on the fly, and it's generally one that a spectator won't play because they don't want to be there. So those are the five differences that I can see anyway between a spectator and a, an active player. Now, what do you do if you've only got spectators in your game? Well, your game is not going to go anywhere because everyone is going to be trying to not make any kind of decisions. And that's something that's very difficult. If you have a table full of spectators, then you are in trouble. You are the only one there who's going to be making anything. And you've basically just become a complete storyteller rather than a game master. On the other hand, a table full of actives is oftentimes, and I'll, ref I'll return to my usual refrain, they are like herding cats. All of them want to make decisions. All of them want to go in different directions. And all of them think that they're right. This is generally what active players are like, and so one has to treat them quite carefully. I generally like to have a bit of a mix where I've got maybe three active players and one or two passive players. The passive players fill out the 
masses, they fill out the numbers, they provide little avenues that I can use to guide the active players in certain directions, and every now and again I'll make an adventure that's based on the, the spectator character, but I will ensure that the spectator character is there without any decisions that they need to make, without any kind of complications, and the active players are the ones trying to rescue them, or retrieve them, or help them solve their problem, and end up being the problem, or being involved somehow. So treat your spectator characters, your spectator players, with a little bit of care. They don't want to make decisions, so don't force it upon them. But they are there to role play and to have fun. And they are there as a tool that you can use to help the active players move in certain directions. The active players are there to make decisions, and so you should cater towards those two. Because ultimately, it's about everybody having fun, and it's easier for you to have fun if you know how to manage your table, who to give what to, what type of adventures to create for your party, if you understand your players just that much better. Until next time, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and, well, why not check out our Patreon video where you can see what kind of rewards you get for joining us on Patreon. People seem very, very fond of the latest offerings that we have come up with. Until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming.